Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I want to talk about the five things I wish Elite Dangerous had. And while I'm talking to you guys about this, I'm going to be doing the community goal for Privateers Alliance. Uh, we're, we're shipping a bunch of goods to their station in order to uh, build a new station. They're trying to build a new installation, so you're going to be watching footage of me doing some good old fashioned space trucking as we talk about this topic. So oftentimes I have discussions in my live stream. We talk about it in discord and other places on the internet about what things we think can improve the game. And a lot of times it comes across as being complaining. And uh, a lot of times developers also ask for constructive feedback. So this question came up in my chat on one of my live streams uh, most recently. And I really wanted to answer it in detail in this video because I think that there's a bunch of things the game can improve on uh, and there's areas that I think are lacking but I don't have exact solutions for everything but these five things are my top my top five things that I would like to see implemented starting from the uh, highest priority to the lowest priority or starting from the things that are easiest to implement right now uh, versus things that may take a lot of time number one the first thing I want is a test server. Now you may have heard this term thrown around in other games, but essentially I want a dedicated instance for the newest and upcoming patches so that us players can validate and test these features before they go to the live servers. Now why do I want that? Well, most recently we've seen a decline in quality uh, with patches in Elite Dangerous. We've, we've seen uh, the 3.0 release come out and a lot of things that were promised to be released and they don't work or they're either broken and we had to have a lot of hot fixes and stuff like that. We did have a beta cycle, however, open to everyone for 3.0, but it still wasn't enough. So I propose we have a test server dedicated to these things so that when a major release or even a minor release comes out, push it to the test server and have us do the testing for you. You'd be surprised how many players out there will be willing more than willing and able to test for you for free so if you're lacking in the qa department in the qa resources testing department let us do it for you now this is a cost it's something that you know they may not be able to afford but in all honesty i think this is one of the most pressing matters with the game that can be easily addressed with this give us a test server number two i would like to have more social tools such as guilds corporations or any type of group activity in the game. As of now, most group activity in Elite Dangerous has to be managed outside the game. Whether you're using Ventrilo, whether you're using TeamSpeak, Discord, or any other social medium, forum, IRC channels, and the like, we always have to go outside the game in order to coordinate with our player groups and or player factions. Now, I've never, in my time, seen an MMO without a corporation or a guild or some sort of a social chat. But Elite Dangerous is not an MMO. It's trying to be one. It has some MMO-like features. But I think this sort of social game that's focused mainly on a lot of single player activities that has some co-op capabilities and some player faction, player group activities could benefit if we get some basic social features. Even something as simple as a player faction or player group chat. Because right now, the only way you can communicate with more than one person in the game is if you form a wing, which is limited to four people. So I would like to have a much broader and bigger scope to this feature. Now, since squadrons are coming out in Q4, we may get this, but I don't know if we will or not. We don't know what Frontier is going to do. They haven't told us. And it is a little bit early in the schedule. So number two is that I want more social tools, some sort of a guild or corp capability. Number three, now we're starting to get to some of the more intricate things that may require a lot of time and resources from Frontier. Number three is I would love to have capital class vessels that players can fly. Now, why would I want that? Well, I think there is a type of player in Elite Dangerous that wants to go beyond the Federal Corvette and go beyond the uh, go beyond the uh, Cutter and go beyond Anaconda. And I think there's also a class of player out there that would like to manage something that has an extremely high risk. 
Now, I'm a former Eve player. Well, not former. You never really leave Eve. You just take a break. And, you know, we had we had Titan class ships and we had the, you know, the fax machines and, you know, a lot of a lot of expensive, really high risk ships that a lot of veterans take pride in owning. And when you lose one, it really, really, really hurts. I think Elite Dangerous right now has sort of an issue with risk reward in the game. So I really, really think we need something with a high risk and high reward, such as a capital class vessel. Now, it doesn't have to be the capital class ships that are currently being used. Maybe squadrons when it comes in Q4 will give us something similar to that. We want something to build. Well, I should say I want something to, to, to build and to spend my billions of resources on in order to, you know, add some more risk to the game and add some more value to my my net assets. Because as it stands right now, you hit a cap with uh, with with the Corvette and with the Cutter and the upkeep of those ships, because that's what you're typically grinding for in Elite Dangerous Endgame. You're grinding to upkeep those bigger ships with the expensive modules. You don't really need to grind to buy, you know, more ships at that point. You're just trying to maintain, which is a very, very common argument that, you know, the grind required to maintain those bigger ships is a little bit unbalanced based on what it takes to get to that point. And veterans do want some sort of a, you know, easier way to earn credits if you have the status. That's a separate topic. I just want something else to invest in beyond the big three. Something else that I could lose beyond the big three. Something to give me an incentive to say, hey, I need more credits. Give me an incentive to grind other than maintaining the ships that I have. Give me something else to strive for. Number four, number four, I would like, and this is my my biggest one actually, but it's probably gonna take a lot, a lot of resources from Frontier Developments. And that is I want a retooled MMO-like infrastructure. Now, what do I mean by that? That's a bunch of words to just basically say, I wanna be able to do more than what we can do right now with multiplayer. I don't wanna be limited to, to 64 players or however, however many it is. I don't want to be limited and constrained to try to get so many people into the same instance. I want this game to be an MMO. I want the net code to be rewritten and I want it to support hundreds, maybe 200s, maybe 500 players, for instance, because to me, that would put the game into a, not only a different category of, 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 uh, of video game than it is right now. Because I agree that the game is currently more a simulator than it is a, a, a multiplayer game. It's a simulator with some co-op and a little dabble of multiplayer aspects. So I want this game to support the things that we want from an MMO-like game. Let's just take a look at combat logging as an example. When you go into open, you have these people who decide to alt F4 or kill the process instead of logging out normally when they get into a pinch. So they get into a PVP match, somebody interdicts them and they don't want to lose their pretty ship and they kill the process. And this is a big problem that's plaguing the game. The current infrastructure of the game really doesn't allow Frontier to prevent that. If someone kills the process, they can't leave you logged in due to the architecture of the game. It would take a big rewrite. It would take a big thing. It would take a retooled MMO like infrastructure. Because let's face it, if you play an open and you PvP, you know that combat logging is a big problem with the game. People feel that they can get away with losing, I mean, with not losing their pretty ship. So there's really no risk. If you get pulled over, if you get interdicted, you just kill the process and nobody will do anything, apparently. So given you know, things like number three, where I wanted more high risk, high reward things like capital class vessels, if we can put on top of that, a retooled MMO like infrastructure that could handle this situation and leave you logged in, have a dedicated server, not use peer to peer, have a dedicated server that leaves you logged in if you kill the process. So if you do, you lose your ship anyway. And this leads into a lot of other side categories like, you know, how open solo should work. And obviously, if you do have an MMO like infrastructure, you won't have things like solo and private and open you will just have a server so this is something i want i, I do realize it's gonna it's a major undertaking which is going to lead into my next point and that is number five 
I want an Elite Dangerous sequel. Uh, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. I want an Elite Dangerous sequel. What I want, and this is this is why it's at the bottom, because it's the lowest priority and probably going to take the most time and resources from Frontier. Um, I want a, a sequel because I really believe they can't make the game that I want with the current engine, with the current uh, you know the current uh, current vision for Elite Dangerous. I don't know what they're gonna call it. Call it Elite Dangerous Two. Call it Elite More Dangerously Dangerous. I don't know. That's not important right now. But I want a sequel, and I want it to be built from the ground up with all those things I just said, and then some. I don't want a single player Elite Dangerous. I want a multiplayer Elite Dangerous. I want a retooled architecture so that we I can play with my friends and we can go PvP if we want to. I want a better security system so that we can go out in safe zones and not be worried, you know, have a lot, a lot less to worry about if we go into a high security system versus if we go into a low security system. I want a player driven economy. I want to be able to craft ships and modules. I want all of that. And I, there's, there's no part of me that believes that the current Elite Dangerous can do that. So let's just do it. Let's just, let's just, let's just put Elite Dangerous in maintenance mode. You know, after a couple years from now, just put it in maintenance mode. Just keep the servers up and running, fix bugs, and just start working on the sequel. Let's not work on Jurassic Park <laughs> during this time. Well, Jurassic Park maybe be maybe maybe will be out by this time. But let's not work on Jurassic Park. Let's not work on Planet Coaster. Let's just build an Elite Dangerous sequel. Because let's face it, Elite Dangerous really really helped Frontier Developments as a company. I mean, we we really really injected life into that company, and I think we deserve a sequel. Now this is this is this is odd for me because I never really request sequels that often, but I do believe that Elite Dangerous is so far gone in terms of you know its vision and how they how they architected it that you can't just just can't change it to what we want. And I, I I can I can feel for the devs. I can feel you know what they're going through when we ask for these things. Like hey, why don't you stop combat logging? They go well, we could if we would. I mean, we would if we could. <laughs> We would if we could, but you know, we we w what we got is virtually impossible to do that. Same with uh, with people complain about board flipping, you know, and how that system works. It's how they, they architected the system, how the mission system works, how you can stack missions. It's how they architected the system. It's how a lot of things are built from the ground up. Now, how easily they can go back and retool that is part of their development process that I don't understand. But I do know that a sequel. If given the proper requirements up front, like things that I'm saying right now, and a lot of player feedback from PVPers and non PVPers alike, you know, we want a multiplayer game. A lot of us want a multiplayer game. Tons of people I've talked to that quit Elite Dangerous want a multiplayer game. And I do realize there's a ton of people out there that want a single player game. And if you ask me, Elite Dangerous right now is more single player than anything. So I believe you've gotten what you wanted. So let's make a sequel that's multiplayer. That's number five. I want a sequel, Elite Dangerous sequel, that focuses on multiplayer MMO capacity, and I am more than willing to pay a subscription fee for it. Lose the skins, lose the cosmetics, I am willing to pay a, subscri a subscription fee for that. So I love this game, I love Elite Dangerous. This is my version of quote unquote constructive criticism. And if you come by my live stream at twitch.tv slash Bonnie, you'll hear me discussing various topics. I'm not really complaining. It's more of I'm answering people's questions like, Bonnie, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? If you just show up, it may show up. It may come across as complaining, but I love this game. I want it to be better. This is Bonnie from Bonnie.tv. My five things that I want Elite Dangerous to have. This is my wish list. Let me know yours in the comments. Take care, guys.